Some like it hard, while others like it soft. It should be rich in details and warn you about mistakes. Of course, we're talking about force feedback. There are many variations in very different games across the sim racing scene. But which game actually delivers the best force feedback? Is there even a correct answer to this? Let's dive in. Force feedback is a subjective matter. Everyone needs something different, which is why a blanket answer to which is the best in the racing scene is really not that easy for us. That's why we turn to you and ask for your opinions on YouTube and Twitter. And believe us, in addition to what we already knew, we have learned some really interesting things. We're very curious to see which games you like in this regard, so be sure to let us know in the comments. Also, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so that you don't miss any of these kind of videos in the future. Let's start with the OG of sim racing, Assetto Corsa. This game was released back in 2014, but it's still one of the best and most loved sim racing titles on the market today. A look at the Steam charts reveals that the original Assetto Corsa still has more players than its successor, or R Factor 2, Race Room and Automobilista 2 combined. All this indicates that Assetto Corsa has struck a chord in terms of driving physics and force feedback that appeals to many players. So it's no wonder that Assetto Corsa was mentioned in our poll. It was the most highlighted game in the other section, with tons of you swearing by its FBB prowess. What makes the force feedback so accessible in our eyes is that it feels very direct, is rich in detail, but doesn't overwhelm the players with overloaded output. Oversteer and understeer are clearly communicated, you feel bumps and curbs well, and it offers a gigantic selection of vehicles. Due to its advanced age, it's also very popular and well optimised for lower end hardware, such as gear driven systems like the G29 or the T150. In terms of realism, AC has to line up behind other sims, but it's still really good fun and only a few poor vehicles let the side down. Next up is Race Room Racing Experience, which unsurprisingly got the fewest votes in our poll. This is of course not the fault of the force feedback, but rather due to its simplicity and the fact that Race Room is simply not that popular. Nevertheless, the free-to-play title has also been mentioned several times because, despite its simplicity, it has a lot to offer. Anyone who hits up Portimao or the Race Room Raceway to test the game will quickly find that a lot of data is communicated to the driver. We think that the suspension is particularly well done in RRE. If you drive the Formula Race Room on the very uneven Race Room Raceway track, you can really feel how the difference in altitude while driving over the hilltop at full speed could easily lead to the car careering into the barrier. The deep bumps on the track really test out the suspension, and the feeling of hitting the kerbs is also passed on to the player rather well. Sure, when it comes to oversteer and understeer, the FFB is not as detailed as in other games, yet the sim manages to make all cars feel realistic, even if the driving experience doesn't differ too much from car to car. When it comes to the king of online multiplayer sims, there's no getting around iRacing. With its ingenious ranking and safety rating system, the top dog delivers an incomparable experience. Online races are often much closer than on other games, and harsh penalties keep the races fair and square. However, iRacing is a bit older, which is definitely noticeable in its force feedback, which is limited to 60 Hz. Of course, with ongoing updates such as the recently installed overhaul tyre models, the driving experience has evolved over the past 10 years. For many, iRacing feels just right and is what they expect from a driving sim. In our opinion, the feeling differs drastically from car to car, which makes an overall statement about the force feedback very difficult. Many players love it, while others want a little more detail and complain about a rather sloppy feeling in many vehicles. However, it was exciting to see that iRacing did really well especially in our Twitter poll. Over 30% of the votes went to the online racer, which again shows how popular iRacing still is in the community. We at Overtake are also big iRacing fans and are planning several tutorials for you in the near future. If you don't want to miss out, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll get notified if something new is uploaded. 
When it comes to awesome force feedback, many will point directly to R Factor 2 and claim that nothing comes close to it, and that's no accident. No other racing sim on the market delivers such detailed power transmission to the player, which makes R Factor truly unique. On the other hand, the title divides the community when it comes to the game itself. For many, the force feedback is not enough, which is why they avoid the sim due to the many small flaws that have plagued the game for many years now. The sim has one of the worst UIs in video game history, and the new design also leaves a lot to be desired. Only when everything is set up and you roll out onto the track for the first time, do you really understand what R Factor 2 is all about. Whether on Twitter or in our YouTube community survey, R Factor 2 hits the sweet spot for you when it comes to force feedback. But what we found particularly interesting is those who admitted that they rarely touch the title, even though the force feedback is really convincing to them. As you can see, there is more to a good video game than just concentrating on one aspect. Before we move on to our last title that did exceptionally well in our poll, we have to name some other games that also struck home for you guys. Here are some honourable mentions. Automobilista 2, GTR 2 and GT Sport. OK, so let's move on to your number one. And of course, the winner is ACC. We say of course because we feature a lot of ACC content on this channel and know that you guys love the game as much as we do. Here too, we thought it was terrific and although many say that ACC may not have the best force feedback, you guys like it the most. And that's a statement that we can only agree with. What distinguishes ACC from other games in terms of FFB is, in our opinion, the feeling of inertia. This makes the cars feel more realistic in their behaviour and gives the players a sense of weight to everything. Since Assetto Corsa Competizione only includes GT3 and GT4 cars, Kunos was able to specifically adjust the world physics to these vehicles. This is noticeable in every curve and over every bump of the laser scan tracks. Oversteer and understeer are also processed really delicately. However, FFB washes out a little bit with cheaper hardware and ACC is most likely designed with direct drive wheels in mind. Not everyone likes how ACC feels, but our survey shows that it edges its competitors overall. On YouTube, as well as on Twitter, The Sim was able to win you over and is your favourite when it comes to force feedback. Is your vote missing from our polls? Then tell us in the comments which game has the best FFB for you and why. We're looking forward to reading your opinions. For more esports racing content in general, visit overtake.gg or our YouTube and other social channels. Thanks for having me, and until next time, cheers.